With just four rounds left in the Continental Tire Sports Car Challenge Series, the action is heating up. Fall Line Motorsports and Burton Racing each grabbed their second win of the year in Indianapolis. But now we switch gears to Road America. Four miles of high speeds and challenging corners where anything can and will happen. With championships up for grabs and every team fighting for a win, it's time for intense racing action next. Welcome to Fox Sports 2 inaugural coverage of the Continental Tire Sports Car Challenge Series. Up next, it's the Road America 200 from Road America in Elkhart Lake, Wisconsin. It is a beautiful, cool day in America's Dairyland, and the Continental Tire Sports Car Challenge Series is up next. I know it's one of our favorites to call. Welcome, everyone. Brian Till along with Calvin Fish and Dorsey Schrader. It's one of our favorites because it is a street stock-based category, two different classes of cars, Grand Sport and Street Tuner. It's not only one of our favorites, Calvin, it's one of the fan favorites as well. Absolutely, Brian. This is some of the most exciting road racing that you'll see in North America. The fields are huge. We see 50-plus cars here at Road America, split between the two classes. And these are cars that you can identify with at home. These are cars, the muscle cars you'll see on the freeway. These are cars you may have in your own garage or driveway. And Dorsey, we always see some RG bargy as we call it, that fender rubbing once the green flag drops here today. And with all that RG bargy, some safety modifications are allowed and necessary. Full roll cages protect the driver, better seats, better belts, you know, better brakes, better shocks on the car. We'll put on a show like you're going to see today. It's awesome. Yeah, it is absolutely awesome. You'll see the start Starting grid roll across the top of your screen and while you take a look at that Calvin let's talk about Grand Sport storylines well break out the rum the rum bum team are having a tremendous se season Brian with two wins they have a 33 point lead in the championship but don't give them the trophy yet let's go streaking well the four line team have won two races in a row they're going for their third straight here at their home track at Road America tough break the Aston Martin's got a 50 pound weight break should make them more competitive here today but they've been having massive break problems saw so a big crash at Indy another one here in practice Hopefully they're on top of that. For more on GS, let's go down to the first of our pit reporters, and that's Jamie Howe. Well, one of the teams that we have come to expect at the top of the timesheets is Turner Motorsports. They were looking to gain some momentum to, for the final stages of this championship, but in qualifying for Paul Dallalana, it was the wrong kind of momentum. He had an issue in the car. That sent him straight into the tire wall. The team, they were watching on with the camera feeds. They immediately knew that they were going to have a lot of work ahead of them. Some of the key elements that they had to replace on that car included the bodywork, the under tray, the radiator, but that's just some of the highlights. It's actually two full pages of parts inventory over 70 different pieces that they had to replace on that car over 85 man hours but the team they got the car back together it's out on the grid they lined up 12th today guys those parts could probably be purchased at your local bmw dealership but we talked about grand sports storylines dorsey there are plenty of stories in street tuner as well Epic point shift possible? Well, it is. I mean, Epic Racing's Jeff Mosing, who is in third in the points, has qualified fourth today. The two guys in front of him, however, didn't do quite as well in 13th and 19th. On top of the world, we're talking about Bimmer World. Here, driver Tyler Cook put the number 81 BMW on pole, looking for the first win of the season. And zoom, zoom, here comes Mazda, boys. Two points separate Mazda from BMW in the Manufacturers Championship. The top Mazdas qualified sixth. Unfortunately, two BMWs in front. With more on ST, let's get down to Chris Neville. Well, Dorsey, as you know, one of the scariest things for any driver is going to that brake pedal and not having the car slow down. And that's what happened to Mark Pombo here last year. Going into Canada Corner, about 140 miles an hour, lifts off the throttle, goes to the brake pedal, and there's nothing there. That car quickly off the road, into the tires, and into the fence. Because of that massive accident, he sustained multiple broken bones and a massive head injury. It took him about nine months of rehab to try and get rid of vertigo and dizziness. Well, he got back in the car at Road Atlanta. He's had a few races this summer. He said he's doing great. No fatigue, that dizziness gone. Right now, just trying to get his rhythm back as a race car driver. Brian? And a lot of times that is difficult to do, to find that rhythm, to get it back, especially at a place like Road America. Dorsey, take us around using some Google Earth. Well, one of the greatest racetracks in the world is right here just north of Milwaukee in Elkhart Lake, and it is the longest circuit in uh, North America, 14 turns, 4.048 miles. And what really makes this place different is instead of one long straightaway, you have three long straightaways. Makes it extremely difficult on brakes at this racetrack. The carousel, well, that sets up to one of the scariest corners in the world, the kink. We've all done it. Brings you down to Canada Corner. That it will wake you up. That section of the racetrack, Dorsey, that separates the men from the boys right there. 
And you talk about this class being based on street stock cars. We heard brakes could very well be an issue. Cars behind the pace car right now. We'll have some great shots from on board some of these Continental Tire Sports Car Challenge machines. Two Mazda MX-5s from Freedom Motorsports, both the 25 and the 26. And then in Grand Sport, a 46, the BMW, and the 78 Mustang Boss 302R. Yeah, that BMW, Brian, going for three straight here. The four-line group are really on a roll right now. As we look at the race analysis, two hours, 30 minutes, over four miles, 14 turns, as Dorsey just explained, and 50 cars will see the green flag here today. They do a split start, as you can see right there. Those are the Grand Sport cars going by now. There'll be a second pace car back further, and here that car, well, that car will come up shortly with all the ST cars. Split start, it just helps keep things sorted out down in turn one, especially when you've got 50 cars muscle up front right now. As you see, the pace car dive to pit lane and the field streaming up behind, getting sorted out. It's an uphill run. They can't even see the starter yet. Waiting for the green flag, they'll crest the hill, they'll look for it. Green, 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 green. Green, 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 we're racing at Road America. Brian Highcotter in that white, black, and red Nissan two drivers left he's got the inside run to turn one he does he had a couple of poles last year and he is superbly quick here in qualifying look at the aston martin there that's frankie montecalvo and the number 15 from the third spot on the grid he gets inside hinman there down in turn one his teammate jake buford the other aston martin now works to the outside these guys are known for really good brakes they can break harder than some of the cars around them at least they can at the beginning of this race well you say at the beginning but remember calvin you spoke about the brake issues that some of the aston martins have had long run down to what we call turn five and heavy braking at the end. Will they work? Well, we've just got to wait and see. You wouldn't expect problems early in the race, but here we see the ST start led by Bimmerworld. Tyler Cook takes the edge right there. That's Chad Gilsinger. We call him the gunslinger on the outside in the Honda. Side-by-side -side battle, Grand Sport on the left, Street Tuner on the right. You see the blue BMW. That is your pole sitter, the number 81 leading to turn one. Gilsinger in the black Honda right behind. Yeah, they made some changes to that Honda during the course of the weekend, found a couple of problems in the suspension setup. They've got a fast car. We see someone kicking up dust on the exit of one on the run down to three. Oh, and already one of the iMoto Mazdas. You see the blue and white Mazda there being defensive into turn three. They're blocking, weaving, and diving already, guys. And S you're going to see this all day long, Dorsey. Look at this run down to five. It's motorized mayhem is what it is. I mean, <laughs> it's rush hour, boys. On board the 25, Derek Whitus, his Mazda MX-5 down to turn five. Heavy braking at the end of this straight. Oh, look at Gilsinger there, getting a little bit. Oh, as a car dies to the inside in the grass. That was way too late there by the 77 machine. And he had Robert Thorne there. Took out the 198 who got going again, very fortunately, but he was a victim. Yeah, I'm not sure if he had a brake issue or just got on the binders way too late, but this was never going to work as he took to the grass on the ent entry to turn five. Back so. on board the 25, down through turn seven, a fast right-hand bend, and Dorsey, a good passing zone down the hill here into eight. I hate that turn seven, but this turn eight, as you oh. see the damage done earlier on in the 77, it's a difficult corner, that one. This is Robert Thorne. He's the driver who basically initiated this uh, carnage down in turn five. He's a great driver, but something went amiss there. There was a lot of cars there, a lot of side-by-side -side action, but look there. Yeah, it just dives to the inside. That's a trouble. When you have no brake pedal, you almost always go for an early apex, which is what that was. Unfortunately, he nails the 198 right in the door. Chris Puskar in the couple more cars 198 got in the, wall. In the Honda from on board. See Pushkar out to the outside, and then more contact there into the back of the 92. Another one of the Honda of America racing team entries. They're on board there with the free to freedom auto sport cars, giving us a great look at the traffic situation that we're going to see all day long. Well, that didn't take long. We got the full course caution <laughs> out on lap one to try to clean up that mess. Well, we saw the problems for Thorne there down into turn five on the first lap. Chris, what do you have? Well, just checking in with the team down here, Carl Thompson on the radio with his driver, and he said because of the contact, front suspension damage, that car still trying to figure out if he's going to be able to get it back to pit lane so the team can take a look. Yeah, but, that right uh, front was broken. Right now, things not looking good with that car. Safety crew right on the spot, and they are so good here at Road America. They'll work to get Thorne back underway. There's a look at the Compass 360 team. There's plenty more Continental Tire Sports Car Challenge action coming your way from Road America.
Well, Calvin Fish used the term argy bargy <laughs> at the beginning, and we've already had it. It didn't take very long. In fact, it was the street tuner category headed down into turn five on the very first lap. And yeah, I'd call this RG Bargy, Calvin. Yeah, Robert Thorne, I think he just looked up and saw everyone whoa, down at the apex. They had nowhere to go, took to the grass, and that was just going to be contact inevitably. And then we saw the consequences with several other cars involved. Doors. You saw some pit stops. You know, the good news here that these cars were able to come in. This is a four mile track. Now, the pace car runs at 60 miles an hour. 60 miles an hour is a minute per uh, a, a lap per minute. So, I mean, they got uh, four minutes. Here. The 25 was in, Jamie. Yes, they came in. Derek White has brought the car in, and they um, did replace that front left rear, uh, the front left wheel, and the bodywork was loose. They did use some bear bond to get it back down, but they sent it back out. Seems like it worked. Green Bay, oh, Green Bay. but the stack restart up. didn't work particularly well. It got stacked up, look and now the, we're underway. Look at the front of the 61 Roush Mustang. It got into the back of the Aston and has done substantial damage below the uh, grill opening. I don't know if it's got into the radiator, but you can see it's shoved in from that restart mayhem. And New restart rules Brian this year which means when you see that green flag you go racing so they split really quickly you don't have to wait for the stripe you just go for it it is go time Brian Heidkotter in his Nissan out in front the number 14 followed by Frankie Montecalvo in one of four white Aston Martins the number 15 and they'll make the long run down to turn five heavy braking at the end this is where we saw the excitement the last time through with the street tuner category jack roche starting to make a move on jay buford there jay buford has five pole positions this year that's the second of the asses in in line the second white aston martin they're just going through the apex of five here's another one michael marcel Three long straightaways, which are all really good for drafting here. This is a racetrack that has a long enough straightaway to get a toe off the car in front of you. Ride on board the number 46, the BMW from Fall Line. Is that turn seven area we were talking about before, Brian? Yep, turn seven, and we got that little blip on the camera there. Trust me, seven's faster than that. Yeah. You, don't, <laughs> you don't stop in the middle of it. But now into the carousel, and this can be very, very hard on those left side tires. Absolutely, it's gonna load up that left side, and depending on what the balance you have in the race car, it's gonna really work hard that tire. So if you've got some understeer there, the left front is gonna go off. If you have some oversteer, the left rear is gonna go away from you. I called that the corner that would never end. It just seems like you're just in it forever. This is the kink. Oh, oh no. Scary when you drop wheels there. We call him Mr. Car Control. He needed it all there. Matt Bell in the number nine Camaro, the red, yellow, and blue Camaro. Their wheels off at the kink. The kink and has nowhere to go. You get off there, it's concrete on both sides, and we've seen so many cars destroyed there. It is really daunting as a driver to do that. Wow, very, very close. And we saw the damage on the front of the 61. Chris, is it going to be okay? Right now, Jack Rouse Jr. reporting everything okay with that car. The team uh, pulling out some bear bond right now, but he says the temps are good, and they're doing something different this weekend with that car. Based on the setups they learned at the NASCAR Nationwide race here, they're going philosophically in that direction. So very soft springs, big sway bar in the front of that car, and it's really working with that Mustang. Also this weekend, we see on the pit box, we're missing Brad Francis for the second race in a row. He got ill a couple weeks ago, was in the hospital for five days. He's finally home recovering. So all of our well wishes go to Brad Francis, the team principal. See on the right rear of Jack Rouse Jr.'s car, that Mustang, the 61 red car, it's got damage there too, which means he was in an accordion stack-up effect. He probably got hit at that back end and shoved straight up in that ass and did the nose damage. Right. Matt Bell and the Camaro really beginning to put pressure on him, and this is what we're going to see all day long, a battle in the braking zones, Calvin. Yeah, absolutely, and, uh, you know, these are some heavy race cars, so when you start hitting that middle pedal, if you do it consistently over the course of two and a half hours, that really has to be managed to have brakes underneath you. Here's the initial restart here. Jack's moving from left to right. He's trying to slot in right here. I think he's going to get tagged down in turn one. It just got ugly as they came up the hill for the green. It looked like... The leader, maybe Heitgotter, slowed the field a little bit, uh, an accordion effect, and it created the problem there. And now a problem for the 84 from Bimmer World. And this is a new model of uh, BMW that they're debuting here. It's still a 328i, but it's coded the F30. It's got a four-cylinder turbo in that machine, and uh, one that they're really looking forward to working with over the next few races and getting it prepped and ready to be at the front of the pack for next year. He's pulled that around the end of pit wall into a safe area, which lets you know right away that it's a mechanical issue. He didn't, uh, didn't think he could finish that lap. There's the 197 
from RSR and Owen Trinkler behind the wheel. They elected to do a stop during that full course caution. Sarah Catanio climbed out. Owen Trinkler climbed in. But the problem for the 84, that's not good news for Bimmer World, Jamie. No, and I just talked to the team. It's either oil or water. They're not quite sure at the moment. But just bringing that car out here, it's a, it's a work in process, and they're not gonna they're not gonna get in the way of any of the other competitors who are out here for the championship. So the day's probably done for the number 84. Yeah, they said the car's really not shown its true potential. It's running about half the boost level that they think is capable of. So we said we're running a bit down on the straightaway right now, but we'll work with it. And it's really just as Jamie said, they're just trying to get some miles underneath their belt and uh, look forward to next season. They'll leave that car set right there. You see an oil or debris flag. When you see that yellow and red stripe, it lets you know there's going to be debris of some sort in front of you. See that splitter on the 370Z there as Hyde Carter goes down into turn one. has got a little bit of porpoising going on there, Dorsey. That will affect the balance somewhat. It really upsets the front of the car because it's pulling it down toward the ground and then it's releasing it. Here's, you, get, you get an oscillation, it's not very pleasant. Here's the battle in Street 2, they're 93. Chad Gilsinger in the Honda, leading the BMW, Jeff Mosing, and then the 81 of Tyler Cook. So two BMWs giving chase to the Honda in front. Yeah, Gilsinger had a good run here last year with Michael Valiente. They finished on the podium. Middle of a really sweet stretch that they had last year. They had a couple of victories in second place here. So this is the track has me happy memories for this team and uh, they've got the balance on the race car and you can see it right now holding the point. Doing all that they can. One of the problems with the Hondas have been some breaks as we start to get a stack up. In the Grand Sport category, this is what Continental Tire Sports Car Challenge Series is all about. It's getting mixed up here at Road America. We'll be back and we'll bring you all the action right after this. Make sure you stay with us. Fox Sports 2 coverage of the Continental Tire Sports Car Challenge Series continues from Road America and not a good beginning for the Stevenson Motorsports team. The number nine Camaro, Matt Bell behind the wheel. A big problem, a lot of smoke from out from underneath that car. And the smoke came from relatively the center of the car toward the rear, which it could be like a rear end. I'm thinking like the rear gear housing is leaking really badly. We Definitely said, oil. We said in one of the storylines, don't break out the rum yet for the rum bum team, but this is the car that was closest to them in the championship, just 33 points behind. So if they have more drama here, this is just really working in the favor of that rum bum team in terms of holding on that championship lead and maybe getting the big trophy at the end of the year. Got the thing jacked up, you see right there, the, the two um, jack stands, if you will. That's what those blocks are. And they're gonna get underneath there, see if they can locate that leak. And of course, anytime you've got a problem like that, they don't heal themselves, Dorsey. No, that, that was a bad one too. It was going pretty good. So they'll look for the obvious things. I think it's gonna be a rear gear and that's not good because it takes a long time to fix that. But it's good for these guys right here. You see the number 13 Porsche, the Rum Bum team that Calvin spoke about at the beginning of the show, leading the championship. And if the nine does not finish and gain points, it is going to be a huge points day, perhaps, for Rumbum. Chris? Well, we initially saw crew members go over the wall looking at both the front and the back of the car. Right now, everybody kind of looking at the back of the nine car. Mike, what's your crew doing that right now? Right now, they're just looking. We don't know where the smoke's coming from. Um, kind of came out of nowhere. You know, we heard it as quick as it was on TV, so. Um, just obviously what not what we needed right is now. Is Matt saying anything that he's feeling with the car? No, he hasn't said anything. I mean, oil pressure's up and the engine's running fine. So it's gotta be something in the drive line. Yeah, nothing more frustrating than having a broken car, but not knowing where it's broke. Jamie? I was talking to the Rum Bum guys, Matt Plum and Nick Longy yesterday, and they are telling me that their, their goal for the weekend is kind of like the theory of playing tennis. You just have to keep hitting the ball back. All they have to do is stay out on the racetrack, stay out of trouble, stay out of everybody's way. They're not going to be aggressive this weekend, and that's exactly why, because they're going to let the competitors closest to them in the championship, they're going to let them fall out of it instead of, instead of Rum Bum trying to gain more points, and right now everything's playing in their favor. Well, right now there is a Camaro leading the field. It's the ZL1 safety car because we're under full course caution. There's the reason why the number 64 BMW. A lot of front damage right there. Let's take a look. Oh, coming onto the front straight away. Looks it across. Oh, and just before the tire wall, big contact for Ted Giovannis. A problem that brings out the second full course caution. There were seven last year for 26 laps. We hope to get back to green when we come back to Road America. It's the Continental Tire Sports Car Challenge Series. More coming your way. 
Brian Till, Calvin Fish, Dorsey Schrader back with you from Continental Tire Sports Car Challenge Action from Road America on Fox Sports 2. Let's get you up to speed. Unfortunately, we're not speeding along too much. We're behind the safety car, the pace car again. And here's the reason. Ted Giovannis there just losing control, coming out of the final corner, slapping that concrete wall hard, tearing up the front end on that BMW, Dorsey. This is an emergency service by Jack Roush Jr.'s crew going to work on that right rear. Now, this is certainly an emergency. These things don't fix themselves. Oil leaking, but this is the scary moment. Oof. Roger Miller there pulling in there is pit box, but I really lay the onus there on the crew. You've got to be careful. You can't just jump in a pit lane. Then we see the 15 car dynamic pit stop here by the Multimatic crew. But then when he went back out, he's got some kind of mechanical issue now as well. Everything seemed to be going smoothly for the Aston Martin. We understood it was a power steering issue. Michael Valiente climbing in the 93. That's in the street tuner category. These were the leaders coming in during this round of pit stop. And here's that problem on the 15 car. Nick Mancuso, local boy out of Chicago. Really fast car, looks like maybe lost a power steering line. It's definitely power steering related. And for Mancuso, that's gonna be hard work for the rest of the day. And you can see everyone down there in the pit lane. It is a busy, busy place. Jamie? What was even busier on that particular round of pit stops because it's been within 30 minutes of when the green flag flew. So it was all call for all classes. And Harrison Gillette, one of the crew members for Fall Line Motorsports, when the pits got open, you were actually hit by one of the other competitors. You're standing here, so I know you're okay. What happened? I went to jump off the wall, and the jack man went first, and I went around him like we normally do. And all of a sudden, I saw a flash of blue, and I ended up on the car. Well, the car was on my feet, so I couldn't back off. And then it hooked my arm on the wing, and then brought me down And as the car went by. Luckily, you're all right. Thank you. Yeah. Great to see he's okay, and I know that uh, you wanted to call it a close shave, Calvin. <laughs> well, it was cool. I like to see these guys wearing helmets on pit yep. lane now, whatever yes. the servicing uh, duty is. That's good news. Ah, look at this on the restart. You saw the rum bum Porsche mixed into that. The yellow and blue number 13. That's the championship leader, oh, and already Ian James coming back. That's the car that was involved in that pit lane incident where Gillette got knocked down, but. Now it's going to be a breaking duel down into turn five, Dorsey. There's a little hip check going down the straightaway there. That's one of the places you don't want to wreck. The 15 up there, the Aston Martin white still smoking. That's the power steering. He'll try to drive that until he loses all that fluid. Then it's going to be real muscle. Or time. all the feeling in his arms. Yeah, well, that, well, that'll be <laughs> sure one after. comes first. That's where those three-hour workouts that you and I do, Dorsey, come into play. Oh. Yeah, I'd get back to the pits and get it fixed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you think Frankie Montecalvo was so happy to get out of it? He'll be glad he ran the first stint. Things settling down somewhat. You see the 83 Porsche in there now right on the back of that red 61, the Roush Mustang that had the emergency service. If you come to pit lane when pit lane is closed, it must be for an emergency. And there had been bodywork coming off, a loose exhaust system. They wanted to get that taken care of, but side by side through the carousel, the Boy. 45 BMW right in front of the 46, you ride on board right now with David Donahue. You don't want to go side by side through these corners because they're fast corners to begin with and you have to slow up to be able to go side by side. This is the car that's going for three straight victories. Brian Sellers was teamed up with Mark Bowden for the first two. David Donahue subbing for Brian this weekend who has ALMS duties with the Falcon Tire Porsche team. Well, the other reason you don't want to go side by side, you ride on board the 78, it slows you down and allows your competitors to catch up. You just saw the 158, Ian James, slide on through that battle. Yeah, that's exactly what I was talking about. If you go side by side, both cars have to slow up, and the boys behind you just get a run on you, and next thing you know, you're a sitting duck going down the straightaway. See Scott Maxwell there at the back of the pack. A little bit of smoke coming from that yeah. Aston as well, so. That's not good. Not good at all, very uncommon to see Kenny Wilden in the 83 Porsche putting the pressure on the 61 of Billy Johnson in the red Mustang just right in front. That battle going into turn one. He was buried underneath oh. the bumper of that. Raj Mustang now and Wilden flicks to the inside down in the break zone for three, gets alongside Billy Johnson, but he's a tough competitor. He's not gonna give it up easy, but he's got nowhere to go there. Wilden has the move. A Little bit of a love tap coming off. While this battle continues to rage, Brian Heidkotter really beginning to set sail, starting to pull out from Heinemann just a little bit. 
Heidkart are really impressive, has a lot of speed. Seen that in his pole positions and in the course of this race, he's got a fast lap, is about second clear of the field. So this car has tremendous potential. Heidkart are a good run. Jamie, what's the word from the camp down in 14? Well, I just checked in with Kevin Dorr, and they did not pit under that round of pit stops. The reason being that they feel like they don't get as good of gas mileage as some of the other cars in the GS category, so it wouldn't really have done them any good to come in early. So they're going to wait until the next caution. Then we can expect to see them in and do a driver change as well. You look at these first two. This was the front row. you got Brian Heidkotter, of course. One, we were talking about him, how talented he is. He's new this year. Behind him, Trent Hinman, and he is one of the younger guys, 17 years old, still in uh, high school. And uh, that's when I started too, so hats off to him, great job. Look at this little argy bargy there up in turn six as Michael Valiente sliced into the inside of one of the Compass 360 machines. That's Ryan Eversley actually behind the wheel now. We had a he huge sits second in points. Huge wreck in this class in that corner last year, so you'd think they'd remember what Ryan, happens. Ryan Eversley told me yesterday that the Compass 360 cars have had a couple of suspension issues. He said, you use the exit curb so much here at Road America, it's actually breaking some of the suspension pieces. They lost an upright on one car, a control arm on another, so they're very concerned about that. And Owen Trinkler in the 197, the red, white, and blue Honda that you saw, having a good run. They've moved up to six. You ride on board. And you see the brake lights in front on the 76, not really slowing down there, Dorsey. Why do we see those brake lights? You know, he's loading the front end of the car up with little extra weight so it doesn't push off. Here's somebody oh, off, as a matter of fact. It's one of the Turner BMWs. Good job of getting through the gravel trap. Looks Paul to be Dalla the 96. Lana. Turn 14 coming up the pit straightaway. Paul Dalalana behind the wheel. Remember, he had that problem in qualifying where he slammed the fence down in turn eight when he didn't pump up the brakes. There we see oh, it. It could be the same thing, Calvin. I mean, that car had the same indication. What you get is knock back on the pads because when you run the curves, it basically vibrates the suspension, vibrates the rotor and kicks the pads back. So if you go to the brake pedal, there's like a gap there before the brake pad gets back to the rotor and you got to pump those up as we saw that Compass 360 driver do going down the straightaway. Well, you talked oh, about RG Bargy oh. there some, Calvin, into the back of the four in the 25 Mazda. And what a great job by LaRue to hold on to it on board the 25. This, this is when you can't say I didn't do that. Yeah, you can't get away with that one. Oh, great save by LaRue, but yeah, just a little bit more of a push than you want to see by Tom Long there in the 25. Well, Paul Sitter still out front, Tyler Cook. See his fastest lap, only two seconds slower than his previous lap. Two seconds faster, should I say, than his last lap he just did, but he's got a nice gap on the field right now. Yeah. He didn't make a pit stop, however, whereas many in this ST field have. That's where I'd like to be, just with, look out the rearview mirror and watch these guys, and you're really glad they're not right on you. Tom Long, really aggressive in that Freedom Autosport, the 25 Mazda in the center there, the sandwich. You see Jourdain there in the 34, having a good run in second, while Cook leads in his BMW in the street tuner category. And this is a good battle. Different manufacturers, different types of cars, and I think the officials do such a good job of trying to keep all of this so even. You've got a Nissan, then a Mazda, then a Honda running nose to tail. We saw problems earlier for the number nine, Stevenson Motorsports Camaro with Matt Bell behind the wheel. What's the word, Chris? Well, that car finally back out on the racetrack, down multiple laps right now. That was a differential seal, so the seal in the back end of that car that holds that lubricant in the differential was leaking, so that's all that smoke that we saw on racetrack. He's back out there, but like I said, down multiple laps, and like we said at the beginning of the show, this has really been rum-bum seasons. They, they have a 33-point lead, and that nine car, Matt Bell and John Edwards were the two that were trying to close up that 30-point lead and challenge for this championship. Well, it looks like the rum-bum guys are going to pull further ahead today. Round eight of 11. If you're gonna get back in the fight, you gotta do it right now. And that's what a lot of these drivers are trying to do. From Road America, it's the Continental Tire Sports Car Challenge Series. Brian Heitkotter leading in Grand Sport. Tyler Cook in Street Tuner. Well, the Chevrolet Camaro ZL1 safety car in control of the field, the third full course caution. It was Ryan Eversley who was off in Canada corner in the gravel. They needed to move him, and he didn't get there of his own <laughs> volition, I would say, guys. He got a little bit of an epic 
moment there. You talked about an epic point swing, Dorsey. That is a points championship battle between first and third. Jesse Coombs there giving uh, Ryan a little bit of help. And then we saw the 96 guys some drama earlier in the day in terms of the qualifying session. Then add an off with Paul Dallalana. And then when Bill Orbelin was about to take over the driving chores, the crew decided that there is major issues with that 96 Turner Motorsports car. But also saw so our leader pit under that full course caution, Brian Heitkotter. What a great job he did. Kid is Both fast. in qualifying and in racing. Got their pit stop done. Got the car back on track. A little bit of a traffic jam down there in pit lane. Let's check on some of the other stops that went on and the problem with the 96 with Jamie. Well, unfortunately, the 96, the day is done after that crew worked so hard to get the car back together. Will Turner, what was the fatal one? You know, the fatal thing looked like it turned out to be a small part, a uh, power steering hose blue. Um, and it's a shame because talk about highs and lows of the season, you know, to come from uh, the last race with a podium finish, uh, to wreck the car in, in qualifying and then to work so hard. Um, Doug and Kevin worked again, as you probably mentioned earlier, they worked really hard to get this thing going. Unfortunately, you know, you can't replace everything on the car. I guess you could, um, but it's just one of those little things. It's, uh, we couldn't have foreseen it and it's a, sh it's a shame that that happens. Um, you know, for, for BMW fans out there, make sure you like Turner Motorsport on Facebook to find out more in depth of like what really happens behind the scenes because uh, these, these crew guys work so hard. I mean, all up and down the pit lane, everybody works so hard and for these little things to happen, it's disappointing, but uh, everybody's heart's in the right place. Certainly was heartbreaking to watch that car be pushed, but they're not the only ones back in the garage, Chris Neville. Yeah, problems for our street tuner championship leaders, Terry Borchiller and Mike Lamar. They had an eight-point lead at the beginning of this race. They've been behind the wall in the garage area for about eight, nine laps right now because of a wheel bearing failure on that BMW. Hoping to get back out on the racetrack, but obviously going to take a big uh, hit in the points today. Wow, everybody in street tuner, the top three, have had some type of an issue. Lamar and Borchiller, Chris just told us about that. Ryan Eversley, his teammate Kyle Gimple, they find themselves in the gravel over there. And for Jesse Combs and Jeff Mossing, that contact mm. with the 75. We're still will waiting there, on that one. Yeah, will there be yeah. a call there? And or did it do some damage to the radiator? Now, the last time we saw a restart, it got a little stacked up. Waiting for the flag. Everybody green, behaving green. this time. Green, green, green. The 48 BMW Henman leads the field to the green. This young man, another impressive future star. These top two cars still haven't made a pit stop here today. That's why they have that track position, but there's obviously a strategy going on here. We've lost a lot of time with these cautions, so maybe they can do it on one stop here today, which would be amazing. Oh, Hinman, did you see the slide off of turn one, Dorsey? And here come the Aston side by side and the brakes on. That could be big too. They worked it out. Remember, these are based off of street cars and a lot of equipment failure. You'll see that about 100 miles of racing is equivalent to like 100,000 miles of street driving. See that 15 car? It was smoking after the earlier pit stop. We believe they had a power steering issue, but it's going OK. It's now under attack by Michael Marcel. He hasn't seen pit lane yet today as he dances on the brake pedal. Mancuso holds that third position. Then we see the rum bum machine, the championship leader, Matt Plum behind the wheel now. We understand there's going to be a penalty on Tom Long in the street tuner category for his contact a little bit earlier. And wait, this just in, the 56 stop and hold. And that'll be a stop and hold for 60, I would think, for yep. contact with the 75. And look at that, wheels being dropped off in turn seven. And the rum bum Porsche right there oh. with a little bump. <laughs> That's some expensive bodywork being changed back and forth there, a Porsche into the back of an Aston Martin. Luckily on this track, Calvin, a stop and hold for 60. This is a long racetrack. It doesn't put your lap down necessarily. So, I mean, it's uh, it's still a long way to have to recover from. But See, there's Matt, a little argy bargy. We knew there would be. There is a little love tap by Matt Plum. They spoke to him yesterday. He said, this is a new car. We debuted this car at Mid-Ohio. And he said, really haven't seen the sort of speed that we saw with the old car. We found a problem with the suspension binding in the front end. We released that binding, and the car got worse. So they've actually <laughs> gone back to the first iteration of the uh, suspension mountings for this race, hoping to get the balance back in that race car. But they're having a good, strong run here. And they're one of only two cars in the top five right now that have made a pit stop today. So they're in good shape strategy-wise. You're putting stresses through the car that are 10 times what a street 
uh, driven vehicle would ever see. You know, you're doing it all the time. So there's a, a, a normal amount of part failure and there's a normal amount of technology going forward on these street vehicles to fix the problems that are found in racing. Well, and Nick Longy had said the other day it wasn't really bad in left-hand corners, just high-speed right-hand corners, which is the majority of this, this racetrack. <laughs> Car running well, though, was the 14 Nissan. Brian Heitkotter, what a great job starting that car up front and keeping it up front until the driver changed, Jamie. His first race back in 2013. And Brian, you said earlier this weekend it's a lot different to be able to go fast by yourself than when you're out there racing with over 50 other cars. What was it like being back out on track today? Well, I got to tell you, it was just plain fun being out there again. Uh, it's my first race of the year. I'm so happy to be back racing with Nissan. Our 370Z was handling awesome out there. We were just, we were rocking through the carousel and the kink. It's just a ton of fun. I was, I was happy to run up front again. We've had a number of caution periods early in the race. You were in the car for those. As a driver, how difficult is it to maintain your focus when you're under caution in the back to green and then under caution? It's not too hard. The, the cautions are just kind of a little break to just kind of reset yourself. And, you know, you still, you got your helmet on everything. You just stay in the zone the whole time. It's, it's, it's good fun. It was great, Stent. Good to have you back. Thank you. It's good to see him back. He said it gives you a chance to reset yourself. It should be noted that he's a gamer. That's, That's how, right. he, how he ended up in the Nissan program. The 23 now back on track. So Mike Lamara behind the wheel. That's important. They need to get out, collect as many points as they can. Came in here the other guys having problems, though, so yeah. they've got to fight hard. This is a tough racetrack. There's been a long racetrack. There's a lot of damage to these cars. Road America, one of the most iconic racetracks in North America. They've been racing here for more than half a century. And right now, the Continental Tire Sports Car Challenge Series having a great one from here in Wisconsin. Still under full course caution from Road America, the Continental Tire Sports Car Challenge Series, but what a great run by the 48 from the starting on the front row. Trent Hinman, quite an impressive job today, Jamie. And quite a big smile on the face of the young 17-year-old. Just graduated from high school, your second race in sports cars, but you had a great, great set. You told me before this weekend that you wanted to really work on your starts. How did you feel in the car today? Uh, you know, everything that we learned from Indy, I really wanted to apply here. It's, it's such a tough series, such a competitive series. You know, you got to be on top of your game 24-7. And, uh, you know, Indy was, uh, was definitely a, a bit of an eye-opener for me. Uh, you know, being the first race in the Continental Series. But, uh, you know, we were, we were able to get through that stint all right. I was very happy with the car, and I just wanted to give it to Charles in one piece. You know, that was, uh, that was the goal. But, uh, you know, just big thanks to all these fall line guys. Did a fantastic job on the car all weekend so far. So let's see if uh, Charles can bring it home. Certainly one of the rising talents in the Continental Tire Sports Car Challenge. Team owner Mark Bowden told me earlier, you can't teach raw talent, and he has it. Chris Neville? Well, we said earlier, Mark Pumbo had that massive crash last year down in Canada Corner. Mark, yeah, got your start here today. Was it a little bit uneasy coming back to this racetrack, though? Yeah, it definitely was. It uh, makes you makes you strap in your seatbelt for sure when you're going into Canada. Uh, you know, we, we had a good start. We had a great uh, a great start of the race, and my brother got in the car, and everything seemed good. Pedal got a little hard for him for the last uh, last race going into Canada on the last one start. So uh, that's what happened to us. Yeah, tough day for these guys. Obviously, Canada Corner doesn't like them. No, it certainly doesn't seem to. But I can tell you what, B.J. Zacharias now on board the 14 Nissan that Brian Heidkotter had qualified on the pole, beginning to put pressure on the Aston Martin in front. Chris Wilson in the 140, the yellow and blue Aston Martin. You ride on board the 78, David Levine. I mean, let's see if their fuel strategy works out. Kevin Darren and the 14 squad have decided they just made that stop a lot later than the other guys, but just over an hour to go. Nine laps since they last pitted, but they need another yellow at least to stretch that fuel mileage. And here's a group that's <laughs> hungry to get to the front. Oh, look at this late move by the Aston. Looks to the inside. That Nick Mancuso. Mancuso. And you wonder if that power steering is still an issue. The full course caution is good for him. If indeed that is a problem, but it'll wear him out quickly. Look at this. Billy Johnson going three wide up to oh. turn six. Of the old five. Goes for a slide for life. It's an Aston Martin off in the dirt as well. We like Billy Johnson, that red Mount Roush Mustang. He is really aggressive. Makes some nuisance of himself. I like that. Well, you know, and, and Johnson has the reputation as being a hard charger, but he's very clean. I mean, he'll run you hard, he'll race you clean, and trading a little paint is not a problem for him. But, uh, you know, he's a racer. He wants to win. That's why he's hired to be there. It's why he's with Jack Rouse Jr., and he's going to push as hard as he can to get to the front. 
Great to see Chris Wilson out front in there, Aston Martin. I mean, we talk a lot about the Multimatic boys, but Chris and his gang have been doing a tremendous job this season as well, so good to see them on point right now. They lost that car at uh, Circuit of the Americas earlier in the year, had to do a complete rebuild. Dave Russell and the boys did a good job. And look, right now, fighting for the lead. And B.J. Zacharias takes the Nissan to the point. Tell you, impressed with that Nissan. It was strong when it made its debut, and it has stayed strong. They haven't had the finishes that they want. They haven't run the consistent program that right. they want, Calvin. And I think that has a lot to do with it. Look at that. Excuse me. I just want to let you know that I'm here. That's another car that at Coda had a, um, a really big shunt is the Nissan of B.J. Zacharias yep. in the lead. It was Spencer Pompelli in the blue and white yeah. Porsche there rubbing on the back bumper. Talk about the talent that is in this series. It's not just the series where you go, well, it's one of the support series. Some of the best in the business are doing battle. Pompelli in the white and blue number 38 Porsche trying to get past the 78 of Levine. And he's one of uh, a trio of drivers of, uh, performing triple duty. This is a huge sports car weekend with a double header with ALMS and Grand Am running together here at Road America. Spencer's going to run in this race. He's running in the Rolex race. He's running the ALMS race, as is John Edwards and Bill Orblin. Bill Orblin's day was obviously cut a little bit short before he even saw any action. Matt Plum sneaks through as well in the number 13 Rumbum. Remember, leading the championship, and they are going to have a good day if they can keep that car clean and get it to the end. Some of their championship competition has struggled, and really the same is true in the street tuner category, as you see Zacharias in that Nissan leading the field down into turn five. I spoke to Joe Vada yesterday from the Rumbum team. I said, how's the car around here? He said, well, it's good because the gear ratios suit this circuit well, Dorsey. And with these spec gearboxes, they can't change the individual gear ratios like you do in a proper race car. So you need that compatibility. Oh, oh, Billy Johnson just got roughed up by the Camaro right in front of him. We're talking about the red Mustang. Lawson Auschenbach in the black number 01 Camaro just a little bit of contact <laughs> into the back of Johnson as they went into turn six. He's not going to like that at all. Wilden looking racy, too. He was looking for a way by down into turn eight. That's a good gaggle of cars right there working really hard to, with one another. Auschenbach trying to get that Camaro to the front, Chris. Yeah, he's got his hands full back there right now, Brian. I spoke with both he and Eric Curran yesterday about this racetrack, and they both love the racetrack. They just said the Camaro's too big around here. All the other cars, a bit smaller profile, so faster on the straightaways. That car also very heavy in the corner, so they said this is definitely going to be a hard weekend for us. And I think right now he's back in, what, about 14th or 15th? Eric Curran looking on as well as Ashley McCalmont drives the double zero. Camaro and there's Curran trying to a sandwich between two Mustangs right now in that black 01 Camaro trying to work his way to the front the car right in front of him Joey Atterbury oh and look what's happening in street tuner it's getting hot up front well remember this battle at mid ohio is the other way around where tom dyer had the lead and he was hounded by michael valiente in the final hour of that race but after this caution everything's grouped back up michael had a nice sizable lead but everyone's really tight now and tom dyer knows this racetrack well and he's been running really strong this season this type of a race that is really difficult on the driver to get any kind of rhythm going because of all the nuisance cautions we've had i mean you try to get your tire temperature up, you try to get everything into a, a, some sort of a rhythm, and then out comes that caution. So I think cautions breed cautions, and we've been seeing that. Riding on board, Andrew Carbonell, the number 26, looking out the back, and that's going to be his team car. There's a little bit of a draft. It shows you just how it'll pull you up. And, and push. Yeah, a little <laughs> bump draft. That, that, that pushes the car in front forward, then you get pulled right back to it again. You push it forward again, and it knocks you up about seven, eight mile an hour by the end of the straightaway. Yeah, it's huge with the length of these straightaways here, and there's several of them. You've obviously got the front straightaway, then you've got the run here from turn three all the way to down turn five, and then obviously the run to Canada Corner. So, oh, Wilderness problems down in turn five. In the escape area, the zone where you're allowed to go, when you get in trouble down there, they've got those bands of tires to hit if need be, but if you can work your way around them like you just did, on you go. And, and he was in the thick of lab, I believe. Yeah, I was going to say he was in the thick of a battle. And talk about a battle. Here you are again. The battle for the lead and Street Tuner. Third right there is the 82. Seth Thomas just waiting for the two cars in front to make some kind of a mistake. Maybe Seth Thomas can take a victory from here at Road America. There's still plenty more to come. The Continental Tire Sports Car Challenge Series. It's the Road America 200.
Just over 50 minutes left to go from Road America. Round eight of the 2013 season for the Continental Tire Sports Car Challenge Series. You ride on board the number 78 in the Grand Sport category. Can't keep you or get you up to speed. Easy for me to say. Let's take a look at a race recap. At the start in Street Tuner, Honda versus BMW up front. The run down to turn five. It didn't take long for the excitement to start. Robert Thurn there took to the grass and got into the 198, turned them around. They continued, but there was a melee behind them. The same incident how it took out two more cars right here. The 25 hard into the wall. Chris Pushkar got the worst of that. And talk about bad timing to lose the seal on the rear end for Matt Bell and his Camaro right at the kink. And then Ted Giovannis. What would you not give for a few more tires coming this way? And then Locked scary this. moment in the pits. Nasty moment here. Gets clipped by that Mustang, took out the mirror, and got run over his foot, too. Watch yeah. this save. That was Juan a LaRue save. there, <laughs> a little tank slapper going on. Got touched by Tom Long, who got a penalty for that, as did this. Jesse Coombs there helping Ryan Eversley into the gravel trap, but he got a stop and hold for 60. That was second, third, and points in that class, as well as we see Paul Dallalon with number 96 Turner Motorsports car get pushed behind the wall. Not a good day for RSR. Corey Fergus in the 198. You see the 30 come in, Mark Pombo, or Matt Pombo, just a late move across the apex curbing, makes contact, and then a problem for Kenny Wilden. Yeah, he just took to the outside there. It looked like he's just taken evasive action, but since then he's hit pit lane and changed tires. So maybe he had something to drift or maybe something cut, got cut down there. Oh, but nothing has changed up front in street tuner. It's the 93 Michael Valiente. Tom Dyer, really the only bullet left in that RSR gun of the three Hondas that are out there. And he's still trying to hold on to the back of Valiente. And we'll go back to now Grand Sport. You want to know what Argy Bargy is? Just look at this 61 car. <laughs> now, yeah, that's a good picture of it. Look it up in the dictionary. It should show yeah. Billy Johnson in the red Roush 61 Mustang. Well, now, a lot of that was done before he ever got in it. Remember, they had emergency service on pit lane for the right rear. I'm not sure about the right front. Now, it's all wrinkled all, all over. There's, There's not a straight panel on the no, car. I think maybe the driver's used. door. Brad Francis will be looking at this from home thinking, boy, that's hurt that damn uh -huh. force, and they got so much drag down the straightaway. And <laughs> That's going to cost some repair bills for Jack Roush. He certainly has a little bit of a parachute hanging out there on the right rear, but Johnson holding on to it. Now, I mean, you've got to think about all the different types of cars that are here. That Mustang, a, a solid rear axle, Dorsey, it doesn't have independent rear suspension, so it's a little bit different handling car than perhaps our leader here, BJ Zacharias, in his Nissan. And this car yet to win. It's a car that Calvin and I, we talked about it when it first came out. Looked like it'd be really pro, uh, potential winning car. It's run very well during the year, but it's just running into difficulty sometimes. Good day for Chris Wilson in the 140, Chris. Yeah, great day for that team. But you know, Dorsey, you talking about cars that are running into some difficulties. These Aston Martins have been having a little bit of a computer problem lately with the ABS in that car. And everybody at Multimatic, Aston Martin, still trying to figure that out. And this Chris Wilson, I talked to him earlier this weekend, and he said there's been some really good information being passed and forth. And one thing they're saying is look for potentially a voltage spike in the car before that issue occurs with the ABS. And what the drivers say is essentially when you go to the brake pedal, it's like the car also sudden just quickly goes into a little bit of a skip in the rear end and goes sideways on you so it could be very scary so all those Aston Martin drivers knowing trying to look for potential voltage spike and shut the car off before that happens that's a lot <laughs> to keep track of I'll tell you what there's been three major uh, Aston Martin crashes due to that that whatever abnormality of uh, electronics but um you know, these are really fast cars, and when you have a brake failure, it's, it's not a good thing. Yeah, we saw that weird crash in Indianapolis down into oh. turn one with Tonus Kasmans. Here we see Spencer Pompelli really putting the pressure on Chris Wilson. Ran really wide through turn one on this lap. Now he goes side by side through five, but Chris Wilson still has the inside line. Going to try and hang on to it. Well, I think it's important to note, we talked about this at the beginning of the program. These cars, based off of street cars, talk about problems for Aston Martin. Tony's Kazmetz. Oh, you don't get away with that one often. No, that's a wild ride. <laughs> we see it from a different angle here. Watch one, this. 
that one takes you a lap to get your breath back from. You get a T-shirt when you get away. <laughs> yeah, you should get a T-shirt. But we were talking about these cars being based off of street cars and, and all those safety features like anti-lock braking system, stability control, all the computers, they don't like it when you go racing. I, I was going to bring up that point. Anti-lock brake system, ABS, is meant on a street car, so like if you hit a patch of ice or snow or whatever and your brakes lock up, it remains able to be able to be steered. Now, you only might do that once or twice in the course of a lifetime of your streetcar. These guys use it every corner. Watch Spencer Pompelli in the yeah. white and <laughs> big power yeah, slide. Talking about coming Beautiful. out of turn one. Yeah, big old four-wheel drift, come off turn one, get sideways, put the power down. There's a lot of continental rubber out there behind it. You can see the black streaks that were left by Pompelli. <laughs> Spence is tough around this joint. He put his car on the pole for the GTC race this this weekend in ALMS competition against some really tough competition. There you got guys like Lally and Bleakamo and such. So uh, that's quite a feat to grab the pole position in that class. Wilson with a little bit of a bobble through turn 14 onto the front straightaway. Can Spencer Pompelli do anything with it? Not this time down the front straightaway. BJ Zacharias loves to see that battle happening. And Chris Wilson is continuing to have a good day. We'll be back to more Continental Sports Car Series action from Road America. Chris Wilson in the 140, Aston Martin leading the 38 of Spencer Pompelli. It's the Road America 200. And this is a great battle. It was the battle for second. It is now the battle for the lead because the number 14 of BJ Zacharias dove to pit lane to make a pit stop. And look at this in the Canada corner. This is a fantastic battle. And look who's tagged on at the back of it. Our championship leader, Matt Plum, is right in the mix as well. BJ Zacharias took the 14 car to pit lane to top up on fuel. So that's the strategy play there. These guys are going out at hammer and tongs. Take a look at the Porsche in second place, Spencer Pompelli. I think he's run the tires off the rear of the Porsche with the rear engine has a tendency to heat the rear tires. It's really starting to slip and slide. There was a leader that we talked about before. Well, it'll definitely be golden in terms of fuel mileage now, but here we see the run up the front straightaway. Spencer Pompelli in that white Porsche there looking at the inside. Oh, Chris no. Wilson doesn't give him a lot of room. Porsche with the top speed. What are the tires going to be like in turn one? It was a lurid slide for Pompelli last time through. Wilson gives it up. He'll try to cut back underneath, and there Woo. goes Pompelli again. And you see it put tire marks down out of the left rear. That means the back end is sliding. You can tell that's what a four-wheel drift is. Yeah, he's using every inch of the road, and you talk about it. He's using up those tires, but right now he's got several car lengths on Chris Wilson as they head down to turn five. Matt Plum, third in the serial. He leads the championship, and now it looks like Chris Wilson, maybe without a good run off of turn three, is going to become a victim of Matt Plum in turn five. Five. I think the Porsches are more slippery on these long straightaways. They don't have as much frontal mass to push, so they've got good top end numbers, but it made it look easy. You know, the guy that I always worry about is always that rum bum Porsche. Matt Plum has got it where it needs to be. Well, and smooth. We don't see the 13 sliding around nearly as much as Spencer Pompelli in the lead. Right now in the 38, Pompelli really sliding that 38 Porsche, but the 13 right behind, Matt Plum on board, kind of gives a wave yeah, to Chris good. Wilson, like, well, thanks for not blocking or fighting too hard. I think there's respect there when the championship yep. leader, when you're duking out with the championship leader, you don't want to give them too much of a hard time. Yeah, go for it, but don't put them in jeopardy of suddenly having any sort of damage. So that Rum Bum team is quick. Here's the battle for ST, though. Valiente still hanging on, but Tom Dyer is like a little terrier. He's not letting him go. And they got a freight train of other terriers right on their tail as well. Well, Seth Thomas has dropped back. The Porsche, third in the serial, is a grand sport car. It doesn't really count. Seth Thomas has dropped back in his BMW to fourth and Pierre Kleinubing in the 31, the Mazda. You see that white, blue and red Mazda, the 31. That is your third place car in Street Tuner. He's the defending series champion in the Street Tuner class who's got a lot of speed, won so many championships over the years. And right now he wants part of the lead. Two Hondas, a Mazda and a BMW. That's the top four right now in Street Tuner. Of course, the Porsche ahead is a grand sport car, not in the class. Kenny Wilden making his way through. Didn't hold any of these guys up, and the race is still on. Kleinu being so experienced in sedan-type racing. He's raced in another Sedan Series World Challenge where it's just one driver per car, multiple championships there. He knows how to get the job done and take care of equipment. You look at that 31, and you see very few marks on it. 
Those four cars are driven right now by top-notch road racing drivers. Those yeah. are all really good drivers, and that's why they're able to run as close as they are, as hard as they're doing. But I got to tell you, I mean, don't forget, in the Continental Tire Sports Car Challenge Series, there are two drivers in each of these cars. The guys that start them have to do the job. We talk about no marks on these cars. Well, Jason Clooney, he shares that 31 with Pierre and Klein Newby. He, it's his job to hand it off in good in a good state so that Pierre Klein Newby can run it to the front. Take a look at this. It's like coming out of five, headed towards six, and everybody's uh, exercising a little muscle. So these have a couple more marks on them than the one yes. we were just yes. talking about. <laughs> Good stuff, though. You see it all the way around this racetrack throughout the complete field here. And that's what this form of racing is all about. There's always some action somewhere. And this battle at the front is just staying right there. Pierre klein -Ubing trying to just hang on to these guys right now. Valiente doing a good job of positioning that race car. But look at this further wow. back in the pack. That's one of the reasons it's so much fun to run in these types of, of cars is that you're always enthralled in a battle I don't care if it's for 11th place or what position, you're fighting somebody every every inch of the racetrack. You see the 24 Porsche in there. That is a street tuner car. It is a Cayman or a Boxster, so it's a little less power than the 911s that run in Grand Sport. You'll find all different makes in between the two classes, and there's pretty much a home for any car, any manufacturer that wants to run here. And look at this battle, BMW's nose to tail down the straightaway. That's the 23, the championship leader, Terry Borcheller, 10 laps down though, trying to get a good draft off of the 56. Which is in third place in yep. points. That's who we talked to about the beginning of the race. You had one of those Caymans, Brian, did when you went through that midlife crisis a few I years did, ago? I did, yeah, I did. Did it, I did traded it, it in. Did it appease anything? Were you all right? No, it didn't fix a thing. <laughs> I kept getting older, so I eventually had to get rid of it. It's a cool car. Corey Friedman right behind the Bimmer World BMW, the number 80. And there's the look. You saw the 56 go by. We talked about championship implications there. Combs behind the wheel. Many laps ahead of Terry Borcheller, but Borcheller is just going to sit and run behind him, collect as many points as he can for the day. Well, and he can rough him up a little yeah. bit. You know, yes. he's the guy coming after him in the championship points, so maybe he can uh, make his day a little bit harder. Yeah, first and third, and I mean, that's... Uh, we talked about at the beginning, he's going to make up a lot of points today if he if he stays where he's at and the other guys continue where they're at. Friedman holding on in that boxer, trying to keep the BMWs behind him. I don't think, oh, oh look at this. There's, I got a Mustang and an Aston around. On these Kazimits. Turn one, exit. That's high speed there, guys. Yeah, I mean, it's hard to tell from just looking at the cars afterwards who started it. It was... 71 of Kazimitz. Looks like a Ron Fellows, Tommy Kendall kind of thing up there. <laughs> what I've seen before. Wait and see. We've documented the fact that these Astons have had some braking issues. Tony's Kazimitz had a massive crash in Indianapolis in the brake zone at turn one. He had another one at Canada Corner. Ah, uh, got did in he the get back, back of him? him? I think he did. Yeah, and it could be ABS related too because you know you just can't get the thing to stop. We'll take a look and see if we can verify contact here. Just got in there a little bit late, yeah. doesn't he, Dorsey? Like, he couldn't but get it slowed you down know, again. It, it almost looked like rear, rear wheel brake bias, too, which usually what happens when when you've got an ABS failure. The front brakes get hotter always because there's more percentage of brake on the front end of the car. They get hotter, they start to fail. That gives the brake to the rear, turns the car, which is looks like what happened right then. Nick Longy looking at the timing and scoring monitor he shares the number 13 rumbum porsche with matt plum and they lead the championship in grand sport but there's more to come from road america on fox sports 2. 30 minutes left in the continental tire sports car challenge series race from Road America, round eight of the 2013 season. Let's get you up to speed with what's been going on since you've been gone. The 56, take a look at this. Jesse Combs behind the wheel off at the exit of the carousel. That is a wild ride. That will get your attention. Then the battle for the ST lead really heated up there. Michael Valiante was left hung out to dry there, Dorsey, as Klein Irving and the gang go through. They teamed up on him and they went from you know, leading all the way back to fourth place. The 93 from first to third. Even Seth Thomas in his 82 brake clean BMW get past. 
And there is the overall leader, the white and blue 38 Porsche that just streaked by through the kink. Spencer Bumbelli leading overall. And a couple of ST cars. Then you see Matt Plum, who's second place right now, our championship leader, looking for big points here today. Big question mark is, can these guys do it on fuel? They've gone, this will be 16 laps since they last pitted. And I think that's going to be just outside their fuel window. We haven't seen a yellow flag in a while, Dorsey, so if it went green the rest of the way, they're going to be really tight. They're playing the caution for sure. Every one of these guys is going to be at the same level of fuel consumption. And so without that caution, they're going to end up a, a lap or so short. Remember, it's a four-mile track. So Pompelli, Plum, fuel mileage on all of them. A question, and we'll have to wait and see how that plays out. Meanwhile, let's talk about the 46 BMW David Donahue behind the wheel. Jamie, what do you hear? Well, David Donahue joining the team here this weekend. The team going for three in a row. Fall Line Motorsports, they are based. This is their home track. They're based in Northbrook, Illinois, just outside of Chicago. Team owner Mark Bowden, he's going for three in a row. Not sure they're going to get it here this weekend. I just checked in with Michael Harvey, the team manager. All three of the Fall Line BMWs will have to stop again for fuel. Chris? Well, Jamie, just in the last couple laps, the 25 car, they, Tom Long has taken that car back to the hauler. Those guys are done. They won at Barber Motorsports Park earlier this year, but in the beginning of this race, Derek Whitest behind the wheel at that point in time had a bit of contact with the 93, the car that's currently leading ST, and was squeezed into the wall. A little bit of suspension damage on the 25. They tried to get it fixed, but Tom Long, when he was out there, said the car is just too bad. They brought it back in. Too dangerous to be on the racetrack. That's a shame for Freedom Autosport. Always put on a good show and they run for the Simper 5 Fund. Always trying to remember our Marines and our servicemen and women who've sacrificed and many times made the ultimate sacrifice for our country. There, Spencer Pompelli leading in the 38. When we talk about championships, we started the, the day talking about championships. For Matt Plum running second right now, you'd think they want to protect that, but talk about ST Championship Street Tuner. You saw Jesse Combs with an off at the exit of the carousel. They need to think about championship. The people in front of them in the championship have struggled. They need to think about collecting points. Still Argy Bargy on the racetrack. Yeah, <laughs> that's John three, I believe. Just uh, that was back there coming through. You know how that other one was helping? This one wasn't. Yeah, that was. <laughs> this oh, one looked blatant. There you see the, the damage. subsequent damage. Yeah, that's going to be uh, have to be attended to because, of course, it's going to rip that whole front end off. That's danger to the guys behind him. Andrew Carbonell, and right there behind Carbonell is the leader, Spencer yeah. Pompelli. And, and the 13 run by yep. Porsche, who cannot risk running over debris and having a, a, a bad day. And you'd have to think that Joe Vardy, who uh, kind of oversees the preparation and certainly the engineering of this run bum machine maybe he's telling matt plum don't put the pressure on for the win right now play this thing out a little bit if you can save some fuel sit in traffic you know just back pedal it down the end of these long straightaways maybe we can catch a break and not need another pit stop well i mean many times it's been said before it's, it's not so much the points that you get it's the points that you could lose so you've got to be smart about what you've got right now they've got a second place finish if they could continue to run there and that would be a good points haul considering the problems that other teams have have right now. So Spencer Pompelli still holding down the point. Rumbum, do they have enough fuel in the tank to go to the distance, Jamie? Well, I just checked in with both teams. BGB, Spencer Pompelli's team, they said, if we have to drag the car across the checkered flag ourselves, we are not going to stop for fuel. Jokingly, that's what they said. But they will need a splash if we don't get a caution. But they said, regardless, we are not going to stop before Rumbum stops. So I checked in with Rumbum, and they said that they will need a splash if we don't get another caution period. It's so close, though. It's only about half a lap that they will be shy on fuel. But they're not going to stop unless the 38 stops. <laughs> right. I spoke to that team yesterday about the reserve. They have the ability, Dorsey, to go to a reserve pump, and that is good for five miles. So you don't have a lot of leeway there. If that comes on, unless you're like in the last mile of this racetrack, you need to be hitting pit lane. And remember, pit lane entry is uphill too. If you run out of gas, you're not going to roll in the pit lane. You're going to stop. And a half a lap here is a lap at any other racetrack. This is a 4.048 mile track. So, I mean, it's it's a anomaly from that standpoint. Pierre Klein being holding. Holding on to the lead, and not Dyer. anymore. Tom Dyer is going to take it in the 196. Here comes Valiente. He's got to run. Seth Thomas, he's got to run on these guys heading down into Canada. Heavy breaking down into what's known as Canada Corner, 90-degree right-hand corner. 
What does Valiente have? See, now, got second. That's what yep. he got. But, and Klein Newbing let both those yep. passes happen. Do you see what he did right there? He saw that the cars had position on them. They had a run, and he said, okay, no problem. I'll let you guys pass so we don't slow each other up. Seth Thomas, so we saw Valiente go from fourth to first to fourth. What's going on with Klein Newbing? That's three positions lost easily. Is he trying to conserve some fuel oh, yeah, to make sure he can make too. it to the end? 23 laps on the board for Pierre Kleinerving, which is a lot less than the other guys, so he should be in better shape fuel mileage-wise. He's got seven more laps of fuel on board. This is a battle for the lead. Valiente coming back. Valiente with a big draft past Long, and maybe Long saying, I'm content to run behind. Think about it. If you can run behind somebody, you're going to save fuel. And Four these miles. guys are really pushing hard. You can see Tom Dyer there really dancing around on the, on the brakes there on the entry to turn one. So it's go time, even though there's 23 minutes on the clock. Remember, with the length of these yellows, if you get a yellow, it could finish under yellow. So you want that track position when you get to this stage of the race. Don't sit back there thinking it's going to come to you. You may run out of green flag time. Calvin, you guys were just wondering about Pierre Klein. They've been slipping back to fourth right now. He's about a couple hundred yards just in these last uh, few seconds sliding behind the leaders. He's developed a miss in that car. The team's saying uh, he's reporting a miss. He doesn't know if he's going to be able to uh, get all the way around the racetrack back to pit lane as that car seems to be fading pretty quick. Really slow. He's dropping off like crazy. And with these uphill runs, he might not make it back to pit lane. You could see sparks coming out of both exhausts there as well as he made the run down to five. Mm -hmm. It's backfiring, misfiring. Disappointing for Klein Newbing. It's been an up and down season and it looks like it may be a down day. But for Spencer Papelli, does he have enough fuel to go the distance? And what about Michael Valiente? Tom Dyer still pressing hard. The fight for the street tuner lead comes to Canada Corner. That's corner 12 here at Road America. And the third car in line is Spencer Pompelli, leader in the Grand Sport category. This battle up front in street tuner has been intense for the last 30 to 45 minutes. Yeah, but look at this. I mean, fuel is certainly a factor in all of these classes right now, but Pompelli's on the gas. Matt Plummer's dropped way back here, and I think they're just saving fuel there oh. in the rum bum machine. They've told him to do everything he can to conserve fuel. They're going to try to risk it. The Honda of Michael Valiente, the 93 out in front, but Chris, how much fuel do they have? Well, you're talking about the fuel situation in Grand Sport, also in Street Tuner. Those teams thinking about it, too. Just checked in with the 93 team, and they said they would like to see that caution flag fly. They need one lap of caution, then they be to the good. So right now, Michael Valiente doing everything he can to try and conserve some fuel, but also stay up front. Well, and you guys talked about the elevation changes here. It's not just uphill to the start-finish line. It is uphill from the end of the back straightaway, Canada Corner, where we were watching all the way up through the last two or three corners to the start finish line if you're low on fuel on the back straightaway you will not make it back we've oh, seen a lot of races over yeah. the years de determining those last three or four turns in terms of fuel mileage and people just starving for that last half gallon of fuel that they need so there's kind of a conundrum here you want the track position in case it goes yellow because then you're good to go and you're at front and you're going to get the win however you're going to burn fuel by being up front and look at Matt Plum not even contending with these two slower class cars in front of him. He's trying to save fuel. He's using their draft. He could drive right by those guys on speed, but he's doing everything he can right now to not have to go back in that pit lane. And it'll be a good points day. So Joe Vardy just talking Matt Plum through this. It's, it's tough, though, when you see someone pulling away from you for the win. It is so hard to be conservative with your fuel mileage just in terms of trying to run at that pace. I've been impressed with the pace of Spencer Pompelli up front in the 38 car. See Chad Gilsinger, the gunslinger, in there in the middle looking on. Hmm. Crew a little bit nervous, but I was talking about the pace of Pompelli. We thought that he had run off the Continental tires on his Porsche. The car seems loose everywhere. The 13, the rum bum Porsche with Matt Blum, seems much more stable, but Pompelli just continuing to pull away. Yeah, he's driving the wheels off it, but not the tires off it. These Continental <laughs> tires are just hung in there all day long, and uh, just tremendous performance by 
And, and that plum is, is uh, in the run bum Porsche is coasting down the straightaways. That's why he looks so much slower in that the, uh, the ST cars are able to run the same speed that he's doing. He's taking the downhill advantage and just kicking the thing up into neutral and coasting down there. Well, and you talk about saving fuel and your, your crew chief always says, I need you to go fast and save fuel. Yeah. How do you save fuel? I mean, the best way is just like that. Going down into turn one, instead of breaking down there around the three or four marker, you lift at about the seven and just coast it on in there as we see one of the, the 158 Mustangs. Yeah, look at him lock him up there <laughs> trying to take as much speed in there. That's Ian James, and uh, he's running up in the third position which is a tremendous performance and he had one more lap of fuel on board compared to the other guys so um, they certainly feel that they're going to run out of fuel here well now does that fall into the category of be the first one to make yeah, your last well, pit does. stop if everyone else is going to need it too and we think we're going to need it let's take it and see if we can leapfrog some people if they have to come to pit lane they're on the radio that matt plum is being delivered a fuel number that he has to hit if he's going to get to the finish here without a need for a splash so that's why we're seeing him drop back drop back from spencer pompelli right now his data acquisition or his onboard telemetry will tell him what kind of mileage that he's getting. He'll know if he's making the mileage that he needs to make. And right now, I would assume they're a little nervous down there, Jamie. It sure looks like it, Nick Longley. You look like your head is spinning as you're staring at the computer screen. I know the guys are crunching the numbers. What number does he need to hit? <laughs> If I knew, I'd tell you. <laughs> I don't think they know either. Actually, they probably do, but they're not telling me because I, you know, my head would explode. It's very close. It's very, very close. Uh, I wish I could say that it's easily green and we're good, but it's not. So uh, I haven't got any accurate information to tell you other than I'm worried. What are the nerves and tension like? Well, honestly, there's not much you can do about it. You know, you do the best job you can. You know, there's the things you can affect. We try to do the best job at that. Then there's other factors that are sort of outside of your you know, consideration in the sense that, you know, if there's another yellow, everything's cool, you never know. So you just try to do the best you can. So honestly, I'm not super nervous. You know, you just kind of want it to go your way. And, you know, so far this season, things have been pretty good. So, you know, I'm not too unhappy so far. Well, I'm not seeing any any smiles on the faces behind you and the, the guys on the pit cart. It's getting intense. Well, they rolled the dice at Mid-Ohio. Remember that one? Everyone scratched yep. their head. Why didn't they pit when there was an opportunity to do so with about an hour to go? And they didn't do it. And they rolled the dice, got the yellow they needed that day. But we'll have to wait and see here. But both these guys in a similar position in terms of how many laps they've got on the board right now. But Spencer's been burning it. You'd have to think a bit more than Matt Plum right now. Road America, such an iconic racetrack. The speed's so high, it takes fuel to get that speed. The question is, who has enough on board to make it to the checkered flag? We'll be back to find out from Road America right after this. Just 10 minutes remain in the Continental Tire Sports Car Series. From Road America, the Road America 200 on Fox Sports 2, and it is getting intense up front. Cars beginning to come to pit road for a splash of fuel. Tires being worn down. And this car right here, the 13 that you see of Matt Plum, the yellow and blue 13, running second. He's a lot closer. Yeah, he he's a closer. lot closer to Spencer Pompelli. So you got to worry about Pompelli now. Is he running out of gas? Or have they told him, get out of that throttle? Well, it's too late to do that, really, Dorsey. Yeah, he exactly. can't save enough at this stage of the game. He, he needed to, to play that, that early. A duration of time. Well, they were telling Matt Plum a little earlier that to expect a bobble with a six minutes or eight minutes to go. Watch this. This is the battle <laughs> for the final spot on the podium right now. Charles Espenlaut had it, third position. Watch him coming off at turn three. Gets a little bit wide, maybe looking at the ST car in front of him. Mancuso gets a run. He gets third. Watch this. David Donahue's got momentum as well in another of those four-line BMWs, and he moves up a spot. Oh, and look at this. Good battles in ST. Wilward in the 92 Honda Civic. Right behind him, LaRue trying to get by and coming by on the outside is the 0-1 Lawson Aschenbach who had gone to pit road last time by to top off with fuel he's good to go yep and the question is how many other grand sport cars in front of him are going to need fuel i think all of them calvin i, I really do I, I mean i don't know how much you can say it surprised me that the 13s picked up at speed maybe they have hit the mark that he needed similar scenario here michael valiente and these guys pitted two hours ago almost there's two hours on the board so like an hour and 52 minutes ago when they last hit pit lane we had a ton of yellow in the mid part of this race which saved them fuel but they've got to be on fumes as well as we get towards the checkered flag and we're hearing radio communication that all of the fall line cars will need fuel and there they are now on pit road 
So those cars being played, Tom Dyer, you saw it taken over the point in the street tuner category. Michael Harvey, team manager for Four Line this morning, said don't forget the Porsches get better fuel mileage, but the Four Line boys are in. Jamie? Well, all three cars have now made it in. It was the 46 and the 48, followed by the 45. Looks like this will be fuel only, and they will go out. Oh, the 45, that was, or 46, sorry, that was much faster of a stop. So they're actually leaving pit lane before the other two cars, but 46, this fuel is taking a little bit longer than, ex or 45, sorry, is taking a little bit longer than expected, but fuel only for all three. Well, that's a bit crazy because you just need a splash. That should yeah, have been connected for probably five seven seconds minutes. at most. And now the 93, oh. Michael Valiente. Yeah, we said that this team needed that one lap of caution. They figured that they weren't going to get it. So Michael Valiente, he took the lead when he uh, got behind the wheel early in this race. He kept it out front all day, but they needed to come in and get that little, uh, little bit of fuel to get them to the finish. Just over seven minutes. You see it at the top of the screen. Just over seven minutes to go here. And right. anything could still happen. You look yeah. at these battles, you could get that yellow, Don't but you anywhere. needed it a lap or two ago. Here Don't you go. go anywhere. Here it is right here. That's Spencer Pompelli in the Porsche. Of course, we're talking about a little bit better fuel mileage right behind him. The other Porsche, Matt Plum, won't be very far behind. There he comes right now in the blue, blue well, now, and yellow car. And it may have been traffic, but Plum has dropped back. He was much closer to Pompelli just a lap ago. Yeah, that's probably traffic. Everything's getting mixed up now. Guys coming in and out of the pits. So for some of them have fueled. This is really stretching it if they make it. So uh, Chad Gilsinger co-drives with Michael Valiente saying, what are you going to do? We could run out on the racetrack. That does us no good at all. Yeah, and I think Michael would have been making that call from the race car. He'd have felt the bobble and uh, given them the, the information. You know, all of the computers in the world aren't going to have it right down to a science when you had this much yellow flag running it's really hard to work out your fuel mileage at that point point. and where on the racetrack did you get the bobble this is four point mile a uh, four mile racetrack if it happens to bobble right here you might make it but you know if it happens and you have to climb all those hills might not pompelli still out in front matt plum still giving chase but this is far from over just over six minutes to remain and the question still is fuel who's got it who needs it who will win it? We'll find out when we come back. The call has been made to Spencer Pompelli. Bring it to pit road. We need some fuel. And radio traffic was, if we need it, they need it. We're just going to take less of it when we get here. And it's just going to be a splash. They'll take the bare minimum, but they've got to make sure they get enough in. I got to say the 13 is going to come as well. They're not going to give up their points lead in the championship. They're looking big picture. If they see the 38 in front of them peel off, they're coming. Yeah, and I think then they'll turn the wick up. They'll probably take enough where they can just run max attack for the last five minutes of this race. Nick Mancuso, remember, we saw smoke from that car from early pit stop. He's hung in there. He's running third. Can he get that first win? We know BJ Zacharias is good on fuel. Be interesting to see how these guys come out. It's about a 30-second pit lane delta plus the free fueling time. So they're going to lose about 35 seconds to... Uh, B.J. Zacharias, and right now he's only 27 seconds out of the lead. I think B.J.'s going to assume the lead here. Yeah. Maybe the first win for Nissan this year. He could be in good, good shape. The 38 pits. The 13 does he's not. <laughs> out. He he is gamble. sneaky. That Joe Vardy, I tell you. What did he just say? Uh, he's risking. That's... He's rolling the dice here. He's well, going to tell Matt to back up. He just told him how far of a lead he had over to the yeah. second car. Just got to backpedal it now. But remember, he told me yesterday we've got a five-mile fuel reserve. When he switches to fuel reserve, we can get one lap. And this was a costly pit stop for the number 38. They put the fuel, they connected the fuel hose to the car. I counted to about five. They, I guess the fuel men decided that wasn't quite enough. I don't know if the fuel went in or not. The team yelling, go, 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 go. So they did lose a couple extra seconds on pit lane. With three sec I mean, three minutes to go in the race, he'll never make up time on this race. Well, we understand that Matt Plum right there in the 13 Rumbum Porsche going through turn five. When he gets to the line the next time by, the white flag will be displayed. Man, it is going to be close. If he wins it, will he have enough fuel to get back well, to victory lane? Has he yeah. hit that reserve? Has it bobbled yet? If That's he has, the question. still eight seconds to the car behind. 
If he has not hit that bobble in there, he's got this lap. And, and here you go, downhill, you let it coast. Yep. Every yep. opportunity oh, yeah. you have, you let it coast. There's the 55, that's not the car that's running. Will be second now with Spencer Pampelli's pit stop. Battle for ninth. Scott Maxwell now behind the wheel. Trying to put the pressure on Carter there in the BMW in front. Got a good run off of turn four there. We'll get a run, I think, down the straightaway. Lawson Aschenbach, who pitted for fuel in the Camaro, was in the shot as well. And uh, Aston around the outside. Will Maxwell do it? It'll be breaking to duel. And that's brave stuff in a car that the brakes have been just a bit iffy all weekend long. They're good when they work, but boy, when they don't. Al Carter finishing these races. He said, I want to be out there with the best in the business. I want to start finishing races. So he and Hugh Plum have traded roles here over the last few weekends. Can that rum bum machine hang on? This one could be fuel related. If he hasn't hit reserve right now, he's going to be good. He's got five miles of reserve. So the question is, will he come in this time? Problem for the 171 APR Volkswagen. You saw slow there coming up to 13. Plum, does he peel off? No, he doesn't. He's staying out. They're going for it. Four more miles. Four Ten more. Ten seconds to the car behind. Ten seconds to the car behind. He is going very slow. So they've already, you see Longy with his fingers crossed. He's gained time on the car behind him. The white yeah. flag is out. That Everybody fun. in fuel save mode. Yeah, well, Mancuso's in fuel save as well, so that's why he's not really uh, closing the gap on Matt Plum. And I think once this timing and scoring rotates, BJ Zacharias may get that final podium spot, and he's got plenty of fuel to burn. Yeah, he'll be coasting down this hill. He'll come off in probably fourth gear. He's not going to run lower gears anymore. He'll be short shifting on the upper gears. He'll run down here until he starts down. Tom Dyer oh. leading in street tuner is slow. Slow into Canada corner, being passed by the 56 of Combs. We understand He's the 13 out. has just hit reserve. So he should for be Plum, okay. he should be okay. But Tom Dyer, they gambled, and it looks and like they've the lost. Hill. Here's the uphill climb you talk about, Brian, from Canada Corner all the way to start finish. Uphill, you can't make it. Well, we saw Valiente pit. They're similar cars. So you'd think they'd be on similar fuel mileage. So the Hart boys made the right call. The 196 crew, they were rolling the dice a little bit, going for the win. Matt Plum doing everything he can. If he just hit reserve, he should be good to go. What Heartbreak a what a for Tom Dyer and Andrew Novich. But will it be celebration for Matt Plum, Nick Longy, and the Rum Bum crew? Are their calculations correct? Nick Mancuso, 8.8 .8 seconds behind. BJ Zacharias, 21 seconds behind. Now in third, Spencer dropped to fourth after that splash and go. Gregory Lafouge in the 81 Bimmer World BMW takes over the point in street tuner. And Jesse Combs in the 56 being shown in second right now. But for Lafouge, this could be a huge day for he and his Bimmer World team. Yeah, they came into this race 39 points out of the championship lead. But all of those front runners have had drama here today. Going to be a big Look point swing. smoke up here in front of our leader. And the yellow is outstanding yellow. There's Something a problem around this oil, oil down. Oil down. Everyone's slide sideways. for Plum. And be very careful out of Billy Mitchell Bridge. We got a broke down car driver's right. Telling him to be careful. Two more corners, but it's all uphill. One more corner now. Turn 14 for Matt Plum. Four seconds to the car behind. It was one of the heart Hondas yeah, that pulled to the side, the 92. Can he make it up the hill? He'll pull the gear lever. One, two more times. The distance only three seconds now to the car behind. Plum, he's to the top. He's to the right gear. He's to the checkered flag. Matt Plum, Nick Longy win at Road America. Wow, what magic there. Nick Mancuso comes home in second. A great day for that team. There's the problem in Canada Corner. Matt Bell, John Edwards, their day is done in the nine. It's not settled in Street Tuner yet. They've got to have climbed the same hill we're talking about. Greg, Greg LaFouge. LaFouge. Here he comes. Can he get through it? Remember, there's oil down. Not only are they trying to save fuel, but it is slick on the racetrack. Oh, and there's a stack of cars up right up on top of this hill. I'm not sure what that was about. Let's see if a 61 through. car flapping his way through there. Oh, he's There's getting pushed back. He's pushing Team cars feet. trying to push each other. There's Greg Lafouge in the 81 from Bimmer World. He'll have to climb the hill. Does he have the fuel on board to get it done? Combs still in second. 
And Lafouge up the hill. He's just good. over the top. He can coast from here. Bimmer World will take the victory in Street Tuner at Road America. Look at the team. <laughs> he wouldn't watch. <laughs> Tyler Cook, the Bimmer World team, they would not look. But for Greg Lafouge, he did what he needed to do. They take the victory. And congratulations all around at Rumbum. We'll be back for all the celebrations in Victory Lane. Well, another spectacular Continental Tire Sports Car Challenge race from Road America. And I got to say, I don't know how they did it, but Matt Plum, Nick Longy, they take their third victory of the season. Jamie? Well, Matt Plum, big celebration down here. Now, I was told you guys were going to be conservative and get the points for the championship. <laughs> that was anything but how nervous were you in the car? That fell out of the sky. Um, I am just speechless with what this Rumbum team does. The strategy call, I know we're a little lucky, but those guys are, they're something special. Uh, my hand, my, my, everything goes out to them. All the credit goes to them. I did what they told me to do, conserve fuel, conserve fuel, conserve fuel, and it just came our way once again. I don't know what we did to deserve it, but uh, go Rumbum. Let's talk big picture. Let's talk championship. Nick, we know that you guys, this is the third victory for you this season. What kind of momentum will this give you for the rest of the season? Well, obviously, the momentum is great, and uh, we do look at big picture. We're trying to win the championship, but uh, this one, we're just we're just happy and, frankly, quite lucky to be here. You know, uh, clearly, Matt was doing a fantastic job saving gas. That's the hardest thing to do. I just walked away. I was hiding somewhere, listening to him short shift, hoping, hoping he'd make it, and uh, that was a, kind of miraculous. You guys, the whole team earned this one. Congratulations. And they saved so much fuel, the margin of there's only 1.9 seconds at yeah. the end. Longy and Plum extending that points lead. Well, we talked about the uh, sharing the rum. Look at that. 54-point lead with three races to go. And Dorsey said an epic points battle in Street Tuner, and here you go. There you see from third place up to the lead, Mike Lamar, Jesse Combs. Great job, Jeff Mosing. Let's head back down to Victory Lane and a couple of happy BMW drivers. Big smiles on the faces. Greg Lafouge's first win of the year. What does this mean to the team? Uh, it means a lot. You know, we've uh, we've had a rough year so far. Uh, the car has been here every weekend, but uh, our luck has not been here. So it means a lot. Um, hopefully get some momentum back for the championship. And, uh, you know, I can't thank enough uh, CRC Redline Oil for uh, making this possible and Tyler for doing such an awesome job putting the car on pole and leading the race for almost the whole way. So. It was the first pull for Tyler. So this was definitely a team effort today. As you watched on pit lane, this one came down to fuel. It came down to teamwork. What was going through your mind as we got close to the checker? Um, it was going through my mind. You just you saw the front runner slowing down. And then you're like, oh, man, are we going to make it on fuel? And I had total confidence in my engineer. And he's like, oh, yeah, we're fine. And you just started to see the laps wind down, the fuel get closer. And you're just, you always have that feeling in your stomach. But you know you know your engineer is truthful. And you know he, ha he made the right call. It's a great atmosphere down here. Lots of celebration. Congratulations, guys. Chris? Yeah, fuel really across the board in ST and Grand Sport. The 15 car coming home second today. Didn't even make it back to the front straightaway. Your teammate out there, Nick Kitman Q, so parked somewhere in the course. But the team really had a lot of obstacles this weekend, so second place has got to feel like victory. Yeah, it's great. I mean, the guys set us up with a great car. We had a good qualifying. We got uh, P3. I think on the first lap, we moved up to uh, P2 and just kind of stayed there. A lot of cautions came out. We had to just stay out of trouble. But, I mean, Multimatic did a great job calling the strategy. We had it down to the, to the end. I mean, he ran out on course, and they're towing him back, I think, right now. So uh, <laughs> just happy to get P2 out of that. And <laughs> yeah, his teammate Nick Mancuso coming up behind him, finally getting his way back over to pit lane, giving his teammate a hug. Good job, guys. Uh, that was intense. And, and I'll go back to if there was no power steering, that was one heck of a job by Nick Mancuso. Yeah, he's got a good name, Mancuso. I mean, he had to <laughs> drive it like a man if he was holding on with no power steering for as long as he did. That was a pretty amazing race. I mean, a race that was won on strategy, but on guts, too. That was a gutsy race. It was a gutsy call uh, to put the championship in jeopardy, if you will, if that, that it didn't work. Well, and, and that's just it. We're running out of time. This was yeah. round 8 of 11, and right. so you got to make your mark right now. You've got to jump in there. You've got to do what you need to do, and... I was surprised that Rumbum was willing to gamble that's that much. I, mean. I thought they would play it safe. I, I mean, it seals the deal, though. That kind of a move, that's a power move, no doubt about it. When, when you put it on the line like that and you gain on the people trying to catch you, that's what wheel, wins the deal. 
But they were smart. They were saving fuel early. Pompelli was just yep. running hard. He was driving the wheels off. A great drive by Spencer today, but uh, didn't have enough fuel in the tank. Well, there are many impressive drives today. And once again, so impressed with that Nissan that ran out front on pole. Let's go back down to Jamie. BJ Zacharias, Brian Heikotter, it was a great run for you guys. Certainly good for Nissan and for the team. This one came down to strategy, though. What do you take away from this race? Well, just a lot of confidence. You know, for me personally, I've been away from the car for a while, so it's good to get back into it and, you know, get right back into the swing of things. It was good to run up front for once. Um, we've got a quick car. We just got to do something about fuel mileage. It was a great race, great effort. Good job. It was a great run, but, you know, you talk about fuel mileage. This racetrack, it doesn't matter. I mean, no. Dorsey, think of all the <laughs> classes that you've run here. Calvin, you're the same. Any car that's ever run here, you, you've got to take care of fuel. So, and and it's a high horsepower racetrack, high speed, and it takes fuel to, to make it go fast. Oh, that was Michael Johnson's leg, I think. It was the first time that he hasn't done a driver change. Broke his leg after Indianapolis. Impressive stuff. Yeah, I mean, but for the Stevenson group, that was not a good day. Two no. bad races in a row has really knocked them out of the battle for the points lead. And uh, the Rum Bum team continues to execute. Love Road America. Thanks for joining us on Fox Sports 2. For Jamie Howe, Chris Neville, Dorsey Schrader, Calvin Fish, I'm Brian Till. We'll catch you next time for more Continental Tire Sports Car Series action. It's been a great one from Road America. Don't miss the remainder of the season. We'll see you then. Take care, everyone.